On this episode of In Cycle, we're talking German cycling with Team Bora Hansgrohe and their sponsors. You know, to bring the national champion jersey to France to represent my, my colors, my country, is a special feeling. We go down under and look at Victoria, Australia as a cycling destination. It's almost like bike riding heaven. You know, you've got great ocean roads, you've got some of the world's best coastline, and you've also got friendly locals. But first, we're at the Tour de France with this week's lead out. We're back behind the scenes at the Tour de France with all the week's gossip. It's the InCycle lead out. This week, we talk birthday breakaways with Simon Clark. See how Lotto Sudal add a personal touch to their equipment and peruse some Tour de France art with Dan Martin. But first, how Team Dimension Data celebrated Mandela Day. Today is Nelson Mandela Day. Can you tell us what it represents and what it means to you? Yeah, it's a pretty exciting day for us, uh, Mandela Day. It's a day to do something good uh, for somebody else. And um, it's about uh, unity uh, and also about reconciliation and, and um, anti-racism, basically. So, yeah, it's, it's a day we look forward to and um, pretty motivated for today. And tell us what the team are doing to commemorate it. Yeah, this year we've got um, the orange handlebar tape, uh, orange helmets. Uh, orange uh, chains, so uh, a lot of orange. Orange is the color of peace. Um, so yeah, that's that's why we got the orange. So. But we also got the people from Laureus here to motivate us a little bit more, some, some of the legends uh, in sports, so that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, in these recent years, my birthday's always been a pretty tough day. It normally comes in the third week of the Tour de France, so. There's not many too, too many easy stages in the third week of the Tour de France, but uh, once again this year was a pretty tough stage. Uh, but uh, I was pretty motivated and feeling pretty good, so I, I went for the breakaway and, and tried to make the most of it. And did you manage actually to have a bit of cake and a drink at the end of the day, or was it all business? Yeah, no, our, our team chef Olga really looked after us when we got back to the hotel and cooked us up an amazing meal and, and a cake for dessert as well. Caleb, I've seen that Lotto Sudal have a new customised component on their bikes. Tell us about them. Well, actually, I got mine quite early. I got mine in the Giro, so I've had it for a little while now. But, uh, yeah, the rest of the team got their personalised SRMs. And, uh, yeah, I think it's always nice to have something like, uh, you know, a little personal touch, you know, something a little bit different because we all ride the same bikes and everything. So yeah, just have something small like this uh, a little bit different is, yeah, it's a nice touch. And tell us about yours, it's got a very special colour scheme. Yeah, I don't know where the bright uh, green came from, but yeah, it's got my name here. Some kangaroos on it. Um, the SRM PC8, but in uh, an Australian flag. And then I think like the, the rest of the guys I have, yeah, also pictures of me on there. So very personal. Surely it's green and gold for Australia. Well, I think it's the wrong green, but <laughs> maybe, I don't know. It's very bright, so it stands out. So I think it's... Maybe it's good marketing for SRM. Dan, you started a new, very carefully named hashtag, TDFR. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm glad you picked up on the, uh, the hashtag. It was, uh, no, I actually missed one last night. I forgot to take a photo of it. I actually, I had, uh, I think, I believe it was Queen Elizabeth I looking over me as I slept. So it's, uh, it's just something that I noticed and that we've had some quirky hotels this year. It's just been nice. I mean, normally you get the, the chain hotels that are all like, basically, yeah, have no character. And this year we've seemed to have been treated to some, uh, some golden ones, you know, so it's been, uh, it's been fun. It's just something to add a bit of, I mean, everybody tweets about how they, or social media about how they fell in the race and whatever. And yeah, I just take my mind off the race by looking at something different. And what is the strangest thing you've ever found in your hotel room, apart from all the art? Oh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember one hotel we had a like a, a, a fluorescent pink statue of a monkey, and also had a chrome, like kind of one foot high apple, which was yeah also interesting.
When it comes to Bora Hansgrohe's Tour de France targets, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was a team geared entirely towards the pursuit of a historic seventh green jersey for Peter Sagan. But with the race reaching its crunch phase, attention is turning to a youthful group of German riders who have already confirmed the team's future is bright. Tour debutant Max Schachmann demonstrated his talent before a race-ending crash in Stage 14's time trial, whilst GC high flyer Emmanuel Buchmann has got some asking if he could be Germany's great Tour de France hope. I started my professional career, then the big step came in 2017 when we stepped up to the World Tour. Then we grow up year by year and everything became more professional and we also see it in the races and in the results and it's nice to see the development. It's my first uh, participation here in the Tour. It's a debut for me and you know to bring the, the national champion jersey to France to represent my, my colors, my country is a special feeling and uh, a special responsibility as well. For the figurehead of the team, this development represents an achievement of a major goal since he took Bora Hansgrohe to the World Tour in 2017. The critic voice after the Sagan sign was, yeah, it's a Sagan team. And my goal was to be not a Sagan team. For sure, Peter is super important for me and for the team. But in his uh, slipstream, we would like to develop a lot of young guys, especially uh, from the German language. That development of young riders has paid dividends this year. The performances of Buchmann and Schachmann at the Tour of the Basque Country and in the Ardennes caught the eye back in spring. Meanwhile, Pascal Ackermann's two-stage wins at the Giro d'Italia, along with the points classification jersey, confirmed him as one of the best sprinters in the world. That's the big advantage of our new generation. We have so many different type of riders, so not only these Big engine riders, we have uh, really good climbers, really good guy for the classics, a uh, couple classics, other classics, a uh, time trial, so there's pretty much of everything there. A main driver for this German development has been the team's backers. A sponsor since its days at pro continental level, main sponsors Bora's growth as a young company has been heavily linked to the team. Events such as the Bora Roubaix Challenge back in April, where 120 of the company's employees, alongside Bora CEO Willy Brookbauer and team principal Ralph Denk, rode the legendary pave of the Hell of the North, just one example of how Bora is maximizing its support of the team. Ich bin schon sehr stolz darauf, dass über die über die Hälfte meiner Mitarbeiter da spontan mitgefahren sind. Es muss ja keiner, aber es wird natürlich sehr gern gesehen, wenn man das ein bisschen spürt. Wenn man schaut, wo ist die Geschichte oder wo kommt Bora her? Wir sind eine kleine Company, wir sind ja fast noch eine Start-up-Company Start äh, mit unseren elf Jahren. Und da sind wir schon sehr weit gekommen. Und wenn ich auch das Team vergleiche, äh, wir sind jetzt äh, das vierte Hauptsponsor im Radsport. Und äh, wenn ich schaue, wir waren letztes Jahr dritter in der World Tour. Nur Sky und Quickstep war vor uns. Ein bisschen Luft ist nach oben, aber wir wollen schon noch weitergehen in das Ganze. Das soll noch nicht das Ende der Reise sein. Title sponsor Hansgrohe have also been keen to maximize its relationship to the cycling team it sponsors, as demonstrated when it brought 300 of its German employees to the Tour de France, riding 90 kilometers of stage five. It's not just putting your logo on a, on a rider and then, then hope that everything will, will happen. No, it's just a start. If you don't get your customers, if you don't get your staff involved, if you don't get your uh, stakeholders involved, uh, that's not the main purpose of cycling. The fact that we have a, a lot of nationalities in our team, it's not just Germans, it's not just Austrians, we have, uh, yeah, I think we have about 10 to 14 different nationalities and it's not just about the riders, it's also about the staff of the team and you always, when you go in that country and in that country, there's already always somebody uh, from that country involved in some way uh, in the team and it helps to, for our stakeholders to interact with the, with the team uh, a lot better. The internationality of the team and cycling in general has clearly been beneficial to the German-based sponsors. Both, though, are keen to keep encouraging the growth of cycling in their home markets by backing young talents coming through the ranks. Then it ging alles sehr schnell, aber es war natürlich ein großer Schritt für uns und auch eine große Aufmerksamkeit. Bora hat keiner gekannt in Italien, Spanien, Frankreich, auch in UK nicht, ganz speziell auch in Belgien und Holland nicht. Aber heute 
kennt uns jeder. Und das ist ein, ein guter Weg gewesen. Wir haben immer gesagt, das Thema deutsche Wurzeln, aber international, eine internationale Ausrichtung. Und da werden wir auch dabei bleiben. Cycling has its history uh, since very long years in, uh, in Germany. Um, but when we started looking at the sponsorship, we clearly saw that there was uh, going to be, uh, let's say the market was going to go up. So people were more open to, to the sport. A lot of people, they know that Germany is a, is a big market and uh, it's one of the most practiced sports in, uh, in, uh, in Germany and that's, that's cycling. With the team sitting second in the UCI World Tour rankings and with some 34 race victories this season, all eyes are on its next goal of completing a German cycling revolution. From my perspective, it is, uh, we need a, a German in a yellow jersey. That uh, would be a super input to bring cycling at another level and we hope for that. Eh? Last year Peter had won one day the yellow jersey and why not um, some, some days Buchmann or Schachmann or maybe Ackermann. Eh? Yeah, I think it would be really important for the German cycling to have one rider who is in the GC in the front. Because, okay, we win a lot of sprint stages last year, but I think it would be, would be something different if a German rider is in the GC in the front. My name's Tracy Gaudry and I'm a member of the Management Committee of the UCI and I'm the President of the UCI Women's Commission. As a member of the Management Committee of the UCI, we look around the world at uh, locations, you know, topography, terrain, countryside, safety, the interest in the local community. And Victoria has got so many of those ingredients. And the State Government of Victoria demonstrated that they were committed to cycling, not just at the elite level, but in the grassroots level. The Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race is the biggest one-day race outside of Europe and has become the new stapled favourite at the start of the road cycling season. Now both a male and female UCI World Tour race, InCycle travelled along the route in Victoria, Australia to see why its home is a perfect place for a ride. Our first stop is the start and finish of the race route, the city of Geelong. I was several decades ago uh, a budding young cyclist brought up in Geelong and Geelong was the, the training ground for the development of my, what became a professional cycling career. I'm a bicycle frame manufacturer from Geelong. I've been doing it for around about 44 years. We used to do the ride on the Saturday before Cadell's race, we'd call it old school Saturday, and we'd all get out on our old school bikes. And I remember um, we got mixed up in the group that were doing the longer ride. The Matt White was up there and he says, I don't know what's going on here. There's Eddie Merck's bikes, steel bikes, Francesco Moser's steel bikes, there's steel bikes everywhere. He, yeah, he couldn't believe it. There's several well-known cyclists that live around Geelong. Yeah, it's got a really rich history in cycling. Phil Anderson, he was the first uh, Aussie to wear the yellow jersey for the Tour de France. Cadell Evans, he's down in Barlin Heads. We started Fuel in 2010 and it was sort of a mix of running my own business and uh, obviously a passion for cycling, a little bit of a man cave with a coffee machine as a bonus. I think the location that we have close to the, the Melbourne uh, main city, let alone the Great Ocean Road, um, it's such a great pivotal location that is easy access. Uh, nationally, internationally, and um, a good mix of scenery and um, climate.
for those who have uh, been a spectator or watched on television the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Ride, there is uh, a steep short hill called Shalambra Crescent. But as an athlete at the peak of their game, it's one of those challenging climbs that if you're in form, you're going to do a lot of damage. It just gets steeper and steeper and steeper. The average gradient of 9.6%, but look at that maximum gradient, 22%. And when you're riding up it, you're literally just looking straight up into the sky as you approach the top of the climb. Chalambra, that's quite a um, challenge for the local cyclists. Everybody has their um, their Garmin's and Strava and all that sort of thing, and they can look and see who's doing it, and then bang, they're trying to beat them. The camera does do it justice. It's like a wall. Yeah, it's a testing testing climb um, that is within access of anyone to do at any time of the day. Which is being a public road, you know, most other days of the year, it's it's open to uh, options. Next, we move east to Bellarine, just off the race route. Known for its wine, but still a very popular area with cyclists. Uh, Jack Rabbit, as it is, was uh, formed in 2010 when David and Lindsay Sharp bought the property off our neighbours. We've got a really nice, uh, relaxed, uh, fine dining restaurant here, and we also have a very casual cafe. weekends and over the summer the roads are clogged with um, <laughs> with lots of cycling groups. Uh, they come up here in all their cycling gear and yeah, it's just, it's really good. It's a, it's a good feel for the place and it's a good look. For our third stop, we head back to the World Tour course, stopping in Surf City, Torquay. Torquay is the ultimate outdoor lifestyle. You're either surfing at the surf beach, hanging out on the family beaches, um, wandering around very, very open streets. So bike riders love being in Torquay. My name is Craig Baird. I'm the curator here at the Australian National Surfing Museum. The Bells event is the longest continuously running surfing event uh, anywhere in the world. Added to that is the uh, Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race and um, it's yet another sporting event that's run, run here that's on, an, on a, a significant level. The Shire has a, has a focus on events and obviously basing them in an area that's, that's both famous and picturesque means that uh, it'll capture people's imaginations. Further down the coast, we travelled to Bells Beach, home of the Bells Beach Rip Curl Pro Surfing Competition and popular too with budding cyclists. Yeah, around here we've got lots of hills. Yeah, we've also got lots of nice flats around the ocean and out in the forest as well. Out in the Golden Plains is quite different as well. I think we're doing one of the favourite routes, yeah. Go here, straight to the beach, and then uh, go back through the hills. And the forest, forest road, and then back to Moriac and through the hills. Yeah, the Great Ocean Road races. It's a good route, yeah. Further along the Great Ocean Road, we divert from the race route again to the picturesque town of Lawn. Movida is an uh, iconic Melbourne restaurant. Uh, it's modern Australian interpretation of Spanish food with uh, an accent on fresh local seasonal produce. Things like the cycling and the pier to pub, which brings people down, brings a whole different crowd up here. Um, a lot of family focus, which is amazing. Uh, and then gives people who maybe hadn't had an opportunity to be exposed to Movida before, a chance to enjoy the experience here with us. There's a generally uh, quite a young population down here in Lawn, and there's so much environment to explore here. Um, hiking up into the Otways, up through to Erskine Falls and the waterfalls. Um, there's just so much to do here. It's amazing.
Our final stop is back in Geelong, where the local community, businesses and cycling enthusiasts reap the benefit of the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race legacy throughout the year. Having the C Cadell race on, uh, definitely see a lot more people coming in to the area and exploring, uh, getting to know Geelong, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Victoria's a bit of a hub for cycling because there's Victoria, when you look at it, it's got so many fantastic pockets within the state uh, that would, I can see would really appeal to cyclists. Um, like you've got up in the northeast, up in the high country there, beautiful vistas, the mountains, that sort of thing. Uh, then there's obviously the surf coast down here and on the other side of the bay. So yeah, there's, yeah Victoria's got it For the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race to be um, re-awarded World Tour status for the men's race and awarded World Tour status for the women's race for the very first time means that the women's race will be the first ever women's world tour event in 2020 and for the first time putting female elite athletes on exactly the same pedestal as male elite athletes. There was nothing better than to go exploring the Surf Coast region, the Ballerine region, going down to Bowen Heads, down to Torquay, to Ocean Grove, and a little bit further afield to Lawn, for example, or even on a really big day down to Apollo Bay. When you think about that as a bike rider, it's almost like bike riding heaven. You know, you've got great ocean roads, you've got some of the world's best coastline. And you've also got friendly locals um, and lots of great cafes to boot to stop along the way. So there's a lot to be said for bike riding in the Geelong, Surf Coast and Ballerine region. That's all for now, but do join us next time. Until then, keep up to date on social media.